Hello dear friends welcome back to high point again we were learning about major works in the restoration age and we are uh, approaching the end of uh, this uh, lecture series is related to the works of the restoration age so today in this video we will learn about afra ben afra ben he she is the most important as well as uh, first major professional writer of the age we will learn more about her and uh, what are the major works written by her and we will also see individually about the first uh, prose work that he she has and we will also learn about the prose work that she has written uh, known as orunuko some of you must have learned this uh, work in your pg classes orunuko and she lived from 1640 to 1689 that's the prime thing that you should learn in which age she belongs afra ben belongs to the restoration age and she is considered as the first professional woman writer and she wrote many well, let's say many uh, comedy of manners uh, uh, works and sh which was so daring uh, at that time and uh, for ben about her personal life and her career as a writer as a playwright we will learn in the later slides now if you are a first time listener and you have not subscribed to my channel Uh, subscribe to it if you are interested and also press the bell icon so that you get a notification when we upload a video in here and also use this whatsapp number to reach out to me and visit my website if you are looking for some online study materials which are affordable simplified and you know comprehensible and well arranged uh, go and visit my website and uh, yeah if you are learning on your own you'll see whatever you have to learn for your nt ugc net jrf english language and literature paper 2 and also follow me on instagram if you wanted to know the course details and anything that we are sharing here in our uh, you know youtube channel you can use this number or call me or whatsapp me in this number i will i'm um, available in this number okay Moving on about Afra Ben, she was an English playwright, poet, prose writer, and translator from the Restoration era. Like I said, as one of the first English women to learn, earn her living by her writing. So she was, she is considered as the first woman, first English woman who earned her living by her, her writing. So it was not that the first writer is Afra Ben, but she is the first professional writer. That means she earned her living by her writing. She broke cultural barriers and served as a literary role model for later generation of women authors. Rising from obscurity, she came to the notice of Charles II, who employed her as a spy in Antwerp. So that was the beginning. We don't know much about uh, her beginning, her uh, you know where she uh, was born and her you know childhood and all. But she came to the notice of Charles II, who was the uh, the then uh, ruler of England, and he employed her as a spy in Antwerp. Ben wrote under the. pastoral pseudonym astrea so this was her uh, pseudonym and which was so essential for women writers during that time because women writers were not acceptable during that time during the turbulent political times of the exclusion crisis so exclusion crisis of what was happening during that time and she wrote an epilogue and prologue that brought her into legal trouble so during the time of uh, the exclusion crisis she wrote epilogue and prologue to her work and that actually brought her into legal troubles she thereafter devoted her most of the writing to prose genres and translation so after that after the legal trouble she devoted her time into uh, writing prose genres and uh, translations now let's see the staunch supporter of the stuart line ben declined an invitation from bishop burnet to write a welcoming poem to the new king william iii so she was a staunch supporter of the stuart line and you know charles ii was a stuart king and we can understand that ben declined because of that an invitation from bishop burnet uh, to write a welcome poem to the new king william iii she is remembered in virginia woolf's a room of one's own all women together ought to let flowers fall upon the tomb of alfred ben which is most candlelessly but rather appropriately in westminster abbey for it was she who earned them the right to speak their mind so room of one's own on about uh, women's position how women should you know raise from the situation and how um, personal space is important how economic uh, stability is important for women and uh, you know those things are discussed 
and literature is also discussed uh, you know, literature produced by women and how it is important that women should have their own space and their own room their own physical and uh, you know financial uh, stability should be there in order for a woman to write man has this that's why they are able to write There's many things she is discussing later after finishing all this we will see individual essays uh, like a uh, room of one so on then we will learn definitely about this uh, fabulous and tremendous essay by virginia wolf see this is a quotation from the work a room of one so on the exact quotation in which afra ben is mentioned by virginia wolf and uh, you know uh, it's not that just mentioned but she says that we should worship we should uh, you know uh, put flowers for we should let flowers fall upon the tomb of afra ben but because she is the one who earned uh, every other women uh, who are there after her uh, earned the right to speak their minds okay she gave her grave is not included in the poet's corner but lies in the east cloister near the steps to the church see in westminster abbey there is a corner poet's corner in which most important uh, literary figures are uh, buried but she was not given that spot but she lies in the east cloister near the steps to the church because she was of course she was a women writer she, you know everybody sees the sexual organ not the person not the achievements of the person not the no cerebral uh, equality was there even now i don't think there is there and shortly after her supposed return to england from suriname in 1664 ben may have married john johan ben so actually she was appointed as a spy in antwerp and she returned to england from suriname in 1664 supposedly and she must have married a person known as johan ben then she got the surname and ben may have had a catholic upbringing maybe after that she um, uh, got divorced from him or she, he must have died or something must have happened they are not together and forced by debt and her husband's death maybe ben began to work for the king's company which is a drama company and the duke's company also a drama company players as a scribe so later she worked with these two both these two um, companies and what happened next in her life ben's first play the forced marriage was a romantic tragic comedy on arranged marriages and was staged by the duke's company in september 1670 so this was her first play the forced marriage and it was a romantic tragic comedy please note the genre and it was about the problems and issues related to arranged marriage and it was staged by the duke's company in september 1670 so her first uh, play was staged in the year 1670 the performance ran for six nights which was regarded as a good run for an unknown author so since she was a woman writer her name was not popular she um, no uh, she was unknown to the audience but still it ran for six nights that means it is a fair collection for the company then uh, six months later ben's play the amorous prince was successfully staged again the next uh, play comes the amorous prince it was also a success in the stage and again ben used the play to comment on the harmful effects of arranged marriages so the Am amorous prince was also about the uh, harmful effects of arranged marriages ben did not hide the fact that she was a woman instead she made a point of it so ben was not ready she was so daring like i said and she uh, never cared and she never wanted to hide her um, women hood her name her uh, you know she wanted to display herself as a playwright as a woman only and instead she made a point of she she wanted to show that she is a woman rather than still she is writing when in 1673 the dorset garden theater staged with the dutch lover crisis sorry critics sabotaged the play on the grounds that the author was a woman see how Uh, mean minded and small minded were the older generation even now people are there they are just seeing the gender not the person not the quality of the person the work of the person but they will simply see whether this is woman or this is done by a man if it is done by a man that is good nothing else they will see so the same thing happened in 1673 the dorset garden theater it was not even the you know people the general people but the critics literary critics actually sabotaged the play on the grounds that the author was a woman see 
how tragic now what happens next yeah let's see her major plays the forced marriage even then she was a prolific writer she uh, in her so short span of life she wrote tremendously and um, you know important and major lot of work she has come up with not only plays but also poems poetry collections and some prose works as well now let's see some major plays the forced marriage which was uh, staged in the year actually produced in the year uh, 1670 and uh, published in the year 1671 the amorous prince in 1671 also the dutch lover in 1673 abdelasser in 1677 was published then town fop in 1676 the debut she in 1677 the counterfeit bridegroom in 1677 sir patient fancy in 1678 the feigned courtesans in 1679 the young king in 1683 the revenge in 1680 the second part of the rover in 1681 the false count in 1682 the round heads in 1683 the city harris in 1682 Fa like father like son in 16 uh, 82 it's actually a lost play nobody has the manuscript so far we have not found it but still it is written by whom uh, alfra ben then uh, the lucky chance in 1687 the emperor of the moon in 1687 there is no need that you mug up all these uh, titles but at least you remember them or you read them two three times so that you remember them that's all needed but uh, just remember these kind of things you know like father like son it is a lost play by afra ben the forced marriage is the first play the amorous prince is the second play and there are two more plays which was posthumously published which are the the widow rander published in 16 uh, 90 then the younger brother or the amorous jilt published in 1696 so see these two plays uh, were published posthumously remember those titles now let's see major poetry and prose uh, works poetry collections are these poems upon several occasions published in 1684 miscellany being a collection of poems by several hands came out in uh, 1685 a miscellany of new poems by several hands in 1688 So in these poetry collections, we can see uh, poems by Afra Ben. Now the prose works, love letters between a noble man and his sister, published in be, published between 1684 uh, to uh, 1687. Then actually it was published anonymously um, and attributions distributed. La Montre or the Lover's Watch, published in 1686. or unico about this we will have an individual video or unico published in 1688 the history of the nun or the fair woe breaker in the year 1689 the lucky mistake in 1689 see how prolific she was how professional she was and in every most of the uh, uh, since she wrote the first play in every other year she published something or other more than two works she published in every other year and that was a tremendous career she was daresome and for everybody who is cherished to be a writer especially english writer they need to give thanks to her for she is the one who started the journey for them so yeah that was about uh, afra ben her uh, life and career i hope this was clear to you if you have any doubts don't hesitate to come uh, in this number you can whatsapp me or call me in this number and also follow me on instagram visit my website there too we have elaborately done about um, afra ben all the other writers of english literature major and minor their important works in individual slots are given you can visit my website and create an account and see what we have provided there if you are interested you can join our family as a student if you wanted to know anything further you can use this whatsapp number or instagram page to re uh, reach out me okay meet you in the next video session until then stay tuned to high point and be happy and thank you for watching this video tata bye bye